By any means, do not take this video as professional advice. I am a developer who can't get good despite doing this for over a year. Anyway, this is how to make a scuff explosive attack in Roblox Studio. Well first, while in the base plate, add the local script. You can add it anywhere as long as it is in the starter pack. You can place it inside the folder or not. Only important thing is that it is under the starter pack. Now after that, you can name the local script anything you want. Now inside the local script, add a wait. Don't be like me and not have a brain because I can't even spell wait. User input service is used to detect when you click anything. These are used to find the player, the player's body, and the remote. But as you can see, there are no remotes here. So you'll have to add one. Add a remote event below the local script. Now for the key, just type any button that can be found on your keyboard to be the key that activates the skill. It can be any key as long as it is in your keyboard. For now, I'll be using R. I'll also add a cooldown variable for the skill and add true as its value. Now this is where stuff are going to start to function. This is what fires when you click something. Is typing is used to detect if the player is on chat, so it won't work when you are typing in chat. Now just type everything I put in here. Make sure there aren't any typos too. Now we change the cooldown's value to false, then fire the remote. Add a wait after, then indicate how long you want the cooldown to be. It can be any number you want, that'll be how long it'll take to work again. Then after that, add the cooldown equals true. Next up, add a script. Make sure it's just a script, not a local script. Inside the script, add the stuff I'll be putting. On server event means that it will connect to the script whenever the remote gets fired. Add character and root part to detect the character and its center point. I also had a mistake here. Instead of adding just root part, it should be humanoid root part. Twin service is just there in case we'll need to use it. It's a reliable Roblox feature, especially for beginners. Now for this if statement, inside these quotation marks must be the same thing you've placed in the part of the local script. In my case, I've put explode in the local script so I'll have to put explode in the regular script too. Now we'll work on the animation. So for that, we'll first need a code that will execute the animation. After that, you can see that between the quotation marks, there is nothing. That is because we haven't made the animation yet. I always use Moon Animator for my animations, but as of now, Moon Animator is now paid. So you might have to use the regular Roblox Animator. To start off, you need a dummy. To do that, check the tabs above, then go to Avatar and click Rig Builder. You'll get to choose between R15 and R6, but for the sake of this video, I'll be using R15 of course. Then press Block Rig. Then you can go wild with the animation. To start, click the plus icon and add old body. Then there you can see the blue bar. You can move it around to which time you want. There you can start moving the limbs. To switch from moving and rotating, just press R. Just move the body parts until you are satisfied. After that, also set the animation priority to action. Now, click the three bars and publish to Roblox after you're done. Now go to the light bulb icon at your toolbox, then right click your animation to copy asset ID. Then place the ID at the empty quotation marks, then add this. Now 
then test it out. If it does not work, open the Outputs tab from the View tab on the top. The Output tab shows if your script have any errors. Now for the explosion effects itself, first add a part. Change its size to whatever you want your explosion size to be. Now remove the check mark from Ken Collide, then check the arm cord box and name the part explosion effects. I'll be going to do this a bit fast to save time, so just keep up or rewind a lot. First, add an attachment to your explosion effects part. Name the attachment A. Inside the attachment, add a particle emitter and name it P1. Now select any particle from the Bingus particle pack. Click the decal and copy its texture ID. Then paste the texture ID inside P1. Now as you can see, it looks garbage. A particle has a lot of properties that can really change how it looks. First, I recommend you set the lifetime to 1, 2, or anywhere in between. Then set the speed to 1. Next up, change the size. When you click the bar beside the size, you'll be able to make the size go up. For the rotation, set it to negative 360, 360. That'll make it spread out a little. If you want it to rotate, you can slide its rotation speed. You can make it rotate to the right or to the left, depends on you. So there are different types of orientations. Facing camera world up means it faces like this. Facing camera means it will always be facing your camera. Velocity parallel means the particle will be parallel to where you are looking. And next is what we'll be using, velocity perpendicular. Now it looks weird, why would we use it? Well, there is a thing called spread angle. If we set it to 90, 90, it would look a lot better. After that, click the three bars beside transparency and slide it up to this point. Now for the colors, first set light emission to 1, light influence to 0, and brightness to how bright you want it to be. Next, if you press the 3 bars beside color, you'll be presented with a color prompt and just do any color combination you like. If you follow the color combination I did, you'll end up with something like this. Now for the second particle, do this only if you want it to be flashy. We'll add scuffed secondary particles. Now duplicate P1 by selecting it and pressing Ctrl plus D. Now change its name to P2. Choose any sparkling or flashy particle. Copy and paste the texture ID to P2. Change the size slider to this. Move the P2 into explosion effects, put it outside A, and it should look like this. After that, change the lifetime to a small unit, comma a larger unit, like 0.8, comma 1.5. Now go wild for the color slider and do something like this. Increase the brightness and change the transparency slider and increase the speed and it'll look a bit more flashy now if you wanna add smoke duplicate P1 yet again change the name to P3 change the color to white increase the speed a bit make it more transparent change the orientation to facing camera decrease the brightness because smoke isn't supposed to emit light Find a particle that looks more like smoke, then copy and paste the texture ID to P3 and make it rotate less. Last of the particles is the impact particle to add more impact. Now use a slash particle and get the texture ID. Duplicate P1 and change the name to P4 and paste the slash effects texture ID to P4. Lessen the rate of the particle. 
change the size slider to this and the transparency slider to this. Then increase the lifetime to low values like 0.5 or 0.8. So now select all the particles and turn off enable. Now go to replicated storage and add the folder named effects. Then proceed to put the explosion effects inside the effects folder in replicated storage. Now then, we'll go back to the script the regular one not the local so now we'll actually start with the effects now make sure you don't misspell stuff C frame is used to identify where the effect will be in this case it'll be within your character's root part as for the parent add the folder named effects in the workspace then set the parent to workspace.fx then add the effects with the comma and the number beside it this number represents how long the effects will be in the workspace So now do what I did here and it'll generate an error because I am stupid. There are two errors actually. First is that P2 is not inside A. And next is that I forgot to add clone. Now if you don't prefer the explosion being inside you, you'll add this line. The number represents how far the effect will be from your body. So if you add a number like 15, it'll be a bit in front of you. But if you use a larger number like 30 for example, the effects will be farther. So as of now, you can move freely while casting the skill. So we'll add a body velocity to keep you from moving. Now add these variables that you don't really need to know what it does. The number beside position is how long you'll stay in place. So if you put 2, you'll be stuck in place for 2 seconds. Since the animation I made only had a short wind up, I'll also put a short stun. Now if you want it to dash on the other hand, it'll be the same thing but change this variable to a higher value and decrease the value of this one below. And it should look like this. Although you can still make it dash less by decreasing this variable. Now for the immersion, we'll add sound effects. First, make sure you add a sounds folder in replicated storage. Inside it, you'll add a sound effect you like. But since I already have a lot of sounds, I won't need to get one from the toolbox. But if you don't have sound files, just grab one from the toolbox and put it in the sounds folder. Anyway, you type this code. The name here should be similar to what the name of your sound file is. Also, if your sound has spaces, remove it just for the sake of it. The number below should correspond to how long the sound file is. If your sound is 4 seconds long, this should have 4 in it. Now you can add as many sounds as you want. Just duplicate this and change the name to the sound file in your sounds folder. Anyway, that's it. This is really scuffed, so if you do learn this, try learning something more advanced and optimized. Play around with this code until you eventually learn. Good luck on your developing journey.